I left Los Angeles for the mountains the summer of 1997. Riding the Greyhound, I arrived at a quiet, dark lodge at 1.30 in the morning and had to sleep horribly on a pleather couch the remainder of the night. When I woke up for the last time, I shifted across the street to the breakfast joint where I heard that the snow level would be 8,000 feet that day and showers were expected. It was the middle of June. I had found my new home. The people, places, stories, and mountains of my life since then have been a fantastic and remarkable dream full of good times and a wild sense of purity. That first morning, Jan Huffstutler picked me up and drove me into the stormy canyon where I would spend my first summer in the high country and climb my first real peaks. She showed me to the beat-down trailer that I would be living in nestled in the 9,000-foot woods that would inspire a permanent change in my life, completely altering my outlook on the world. The humble instructions from Todd Kelphy, a true mountain character, would guide me through numerous hikes and climbs. My heart began to slow, and often I seemed to walk in a near-meditative state of consciousness. I realized then that one cannot live or even come close to feeling this mountain rhythm on short weekend jaunts from the big city. Understanding took time, lots of time, with no boundaries, no return dates. I have changed so much over the several years since that stormy morning tentatively poking around a ratty cold trailer wondering how I would live in such a place, yet the mountain rhythm has always driven me. It is an intense, calm, a relaxed confidence, an overwhelming desire to remain with the wild, the pure life. The mountains tell a story of creeks and grassy meadows and sunrises over granite spires. They sing songs about the people and the friendships built through adventure. The mountains are my voice, and I hope to express their inspiration, their motivation, and the beautiful people who have eddied into this small pool in the river. We are all a humble folk, letting the magical thread of the mountains weave our lives together. This routine porch. Okay, and the big kitty bowl. Now hold on. Let's put a little key paws in there. No. No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now hold on. <laughs> yeah, so Jan introduced me to the ratty trailer that became my new home some five years ago. She's humble and hardworking. She has packed mules from one end of the mountain range to the other, and she's lived at a backcountry ski lodge for 18 years. It is not a trend-driven world that she lives in. It is one embracing only the basics, the necessities of pure mountain living. From 7350 here. <coughs> wow. March 28th. <laughs> Tells the date, too. Yeah. Log number 39. 4,450 feet up. 4,110 feet down. I, uh... Andy Selters lives an idyllic life. Having climbed some of the hardest routes in the Himalaya and bicycled across Tibet, he exudes quiet wisdom throughout his simple day-to-day -day life at the base of his home mountain range. After a near-fatal airplane accident in the Yukon, it has been amazing to watch his recovery. A mountain spirit of boundless proportions, Andy has taught me a lot about being happy and at peace in one's own perfect world. The thoughts of again, perhaps they're better. Hey Mark. Hey dude. Wake up man. You're late for work dude.
What are you doing, man? Sleeping with your skis? Nothing. I wasn't doing anything. Hey, what the hell is going on in here? Mark is a Canadian who loves to ski. His humor, antics, and illustrious Boy Scout stories have entertained us all. He grew up Nordic ski racing in Canada and now lives in the United States, spending his winters at a backcountry ski lodge and his summers guiding kayaking. His skiing style is the result of years of freshies and countless days of breaking trail. The turns speak for themselves. May it be again, may it be known. a fountain that was not made by the hands of men there is a road no simple highway look at those big fat boards that Marty's skiing on folks I mean those are bigger than anything I've ever seen skinny stinks yes Telly has been very, very good to me. <laughs> Marty Hornick holds a humble legacy in our neck of the woods for things like the record ascent of Mount Whitney in just two hours and 18 minutes, or the record time skiing from Rock Creek Lodge to Mammoth in just under eight hours. But these records hardly tell the story of the man behind them. Spirited and driven by a pure love of the mountains, Marty evokes a wonderful joyfulness from all that are around him. He is a mentor and a peer, and our annual descents of his favorite line, the Silver Saddle, have already become a cherished tradition. No wind to blow, you choose to lead must follow. But if you fall, you fall alone. If you should stand. Throughout the winter, I usually hope to run into someone new to go skiing with, to share the magic of the mountains with. And this winter, several people came passing through the backcountry lodge that I called home. Incredible skiers, they each brought a new face and a new story to the scene of people I was living with. Ed Gordon, a friend of Mark's, is a lawyer who washes dishes all winter so that he can ski. Diane and Susan Sheffield stopped in to treat their father to a ski vacation, and then joined the early morning ranks of the Powder Hungry crew for a couple days. Greg Stone visited with Holly Pearson, who you'll meet later, and lit up the perfect corn snow on two big classic descents. The greatest thing about all of these people is the randomness in which they showed up, shared our favorite lines, and supplied a renewed energy to get out there and ski. They are incredible people. We're going to stir our garlic powder up into the water, into all the oil, and add it here for additional flavoring. And if you come in over here, um, I'm going to show you the dish. These are called burgers. And we add the burgers into our pasta. I like to start the burgers a little before I got the pasta on, because burgers, this two-minute pasta is a lot more than burgers can be. A lot slower than two-minute pasta. And, you know, we want to make sure the burgers are done too all the way, with the mad cow disease and Good to cook your cooking meat. Todd Kelfi got me started in the mountains, giving me a clear sense of what it means to be a true, humble mountain bum. His energy and the lifestyle that he's lived is probably the main reason I never made it to college. Motivated by a simple desire to live in the mountains, Todd left Los Angeles much in the same way that I did, leaving behind an entirely different past for one fresh with high peaks and deep valleys. He has been the catalyst behind several month-long or longer trips over the past couple years and loves his quiet lifestyle free from hype and ego. Todd sees such a pure vision that I often feel like he's out of place even in the so-called real world of the small mountain town. 
having to work or pay bills, buy gasoline or pay rent really seemed to be too much for him. His heart lies in the effortless life of backcountry travel, ski touring for a month or backpacking for two months, where there is nothing between him and the moment, the beautiful passage of the sun from one day to the next. He knows how much he has inspired my lifestyle, and I hope that others may gain a little humility from a person who spends easily half of every year in the backcountry for the pure joy of it. No hype, no ego. He has given himself completely to the mountains. Holly Pearson met Todd and I through a chance meeting with a friend of ours at a hot spring. Not long afterward, Todd and Holly planned a month-long ski tour, and I hoped to go along. Sure enough, it happened, and I had the opportunity to ski with a woman who is hardier and more enduring than most. Her spirit is unquenchable, her laughter ringing from the basin walls. Going to school in Southern California, she also eventually found the mountain life, and now has been living the endless winter between New Zealand and the States. I can't say that the 35-day ski tour changed her, but it certainly pushed her to accept new boundaries and new possibilities. For one, she had to put up with Todd and I in a tent, and that's not easy. What follows is a documentary slice of the scenes and ski descents from our 35-day trip. These long trips are the essence of our existence, lying at the very core of our being. The trip started with incredible powder skiing. Wide open bowls, stable soft snow, and an achingly blue sky overhead. It dropped below zero during the night, but the cold temperatures were well worth it. There of course were no other tracks or people, as it would be the rest of the trip, and we did laps in our own private paradise. So guys, what did you think of the skiing today? I thought it was uh, pretty soft, pretty nice. Marginal to average. Yeah. <laughs> no. I mean, I like doing other things better, but there's a little too much snow to do that right now. So I saw for skiing today. What motivated you to do this big 40-day tour there, Todd? Um, hot shots. Hot shot, no. Uh, well, it's a pretty easy way to escape work. All right. It's hard to spend 40 days in the front country and be unemployed. get by and be unemployed. Oh, that was a good match with my recent unemployment status. And as you can see the slope here. I don't feel guilty about it. The, we didn't have, uh, we weren't battling, you know, over freshies today. They were just kind of handed to us. Right, I, I think the lines are much better here. <laughs> I think the lines you are better. You don't have to wait nearly as long as you do in the friend country. Not too much elbowing on the way down. Yeah. There's no cell phones up here. Got some quality laps in today. Unless Holly has her cell phone with her. God. <laughs> Do you? Do you have it? Yeah, but I brought the fax machine. Did you bring the fax machine? Because I really do need to make some calls. I wanted to set up the mid, you know, mid to our computer station. <laughs> this is all going to be online. People are going to watch our trips, it's going to be a virtual. We don't move fast in the backcountry, so as you might expect, we spent another day base camp and went out for more turns. 
thousand foot open bowls all to ourselves once again. We were beside ourselves with bliss. fresh snow was corning up on south facing slopes. Dramatic views and beautiful days. We lived in luxury until an unexpected snowstorm blew in and caught us on the very crest of the range. We dug a hole and augered in. The spin drift was insane and the weather so fierce we didn't relieve ourselves for an entire day. It was time for reabsorption and patience. Fuck. <laughs> Doing it. I'm doing it. When was leftover salmon? Do you there? What's that? When was leftover? <laughs> What's this day what in the tent, Dave? Day three? Four? Full day three. Four Night's gonna be the fourth night. Hey. Hi. You've been stormbound for a while. You certainly have been. The drone. So what are your thoughts on this uh, dramatic basin? Well, right now I'm just thinking about getting the perfect bike combination with my gorp. <laughs> you, know, you have to have the right mix of everything. Oh, was a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a nice, uh, nice trip. You know, it's kind of a nice last trip for me before I... Um, Move back to Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah. And settle down. Yeah. Because I'm realizing that I'm going Find nowhere. a nice woman and have a couple of kids. I'm going nowhere. <laughs> I'm on a dead end street. Nowhere. <laughs> nowhere. I'm a loser. How's it going? How are your thoughts about this trip, Dave? Oh, I think it's going pretty well. <laughs> <laughs> I think we started by skiing some powder and now we're going to ski some. Uh, uh, really good fucking corn. Really and that's good. the word. Yeah. That's the word. Good corn. How y'all doing? <sighs> Dandy. Enjoying the sun and mountains and foot odor. <laughs> it's a nice blend. <gasps> smells so fresh out here. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I love about it. Oh. <laughs> then we get up side effects or sound effects. We splat! Crack! Snap! The real backcountry. Look at that. Medic Dave Hubner on hand. <laughs> Sets the situation Ooh. nicely. He yeah. was a gusher. We had Holly go head over heels on us at <laughs> high speed with a heavy pack. And uh, the ski tip took her cheek It was out. extreme skiing at its best. Yeah. A couple times over. <laughs> Thought we'd get the war zone on tape. The blood, the gore, the explosion. The drama. <laughs> 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 the aftermath. She seems to be doing okay though, huh? <laughs> She's just delirious. She's deliriously happy with pain. We moved on and the days lost all relation to time. They began with a quart of tea at sunrise and ended with another quart at sunset. In between, we skied. The cold and snow of the last storm faded away with day after day of sunny spring weather. 
Truly, we were in heaven. And ease and calm embraced us till we could hardly talk about the skiing. It was always good. Always surrounded by incredible wilderness. The camps where we slept and the bowls where we skied lost all importance and gained all their truth. We were no longer people skiing on the landscape. We had become a part of the whole. Give us some greens of summer. Make you think all the world's a sunny day. Oh yeah. Well I've got a nice camera. I'd love to take a photograph. So mom come and take my cold chrome. It'll do, but it's not the same as Cliff. Yeah. Cliff is by far my favorite. Look, that one's made for women, Holly. Just come on. I don't know. I mean, it's better than chewing on snow. <laughs> it's my bar of choice when I'm in the high Sierras. All right. It's fantastic. It's a Luna. I mean, it's like heaven in a wrapper. <laughs> well, I was born in the Southland. Some 20 odd years ago I ran away for the first time From basin to basin, we traveled slowly and steadily through a spiritual landscape, an epic playground. Our good energy and understanding of one another grew as the trip continued. You might say we found an equilibrium, a platform on which to sit and watch the world go round. It was a beautiful experience, an enlightening experience, as all long trips are. It was meditation, living a life of no boundaries, no rules, no sense of time. When the snow did finally run out, we were not bothered and we were not happy. It was just another step along the path and we continued to put one foot in front of the other. Well folks, the tour has ended. <laughs> Say so. Bummer to leave on such nice conditions. <laughs> yeah. Should we skin up that and do it again? Yeah, right. That would be nice. Why? Did you do the power wedge? <laughs> the power no, wedge. Too much. Power, power wedge, wedge is, is the shit. Awesome. Oh, yeah? It's a fucking. You can just point them, and there's so much resistance. You just. Mm, oh and no! I did a lot cruise. of kick turns. You should have.
poor decision. As I look back on my winter and all the folks who have passed in front of this lens, I feel that I am blessed. Blessed to be here at this time with these people in these mountains. When I left Los Angeles, I never expected to achieve such happiness, live such a dream, or be surrounded by such beautiful people. <laughs> for all the folks who have made my life possible, this one's for you.
Thank you.